I have realized this past year, especially as we've changed our name to The Resilient Caregiver, um, how deeply passionate I am, but I think us to mm-hmm. collectively, how passionate we are about uh, helping caregivers thrive, about helping caregivers um, build resiliency. You're listening to the Resilient Caregiver Podcast, a show that helps caregivers on the foster and adoption journey go the distance and not lose their minds in the process. Pull up a chair and join the conversation. Here are your hosts, Mike and Kristen Berry. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Resilient Caregiver Podcast. My name is Mike Berry, along with Kristen Berry. We are your hosts for the show, and guess what? It's the last episode of 2023. We're in the last week of 2023, and we decided that uh, the way to end uh, 2023 uh, with our podcast is uh, to look back on the year and have a conversation about the lessons we have personally learned as caregivers on this journey. And there's a lot. Um, we're, we we can't walk through every single lesson because, man, that would take like... Because we're learning new lessons every day. That's true. You always say it better than I was about to say it. Because I was going to be like, because that would take four hours. <laughs> <laughs> take longer than four take hours. Take longer than four hours. <laughs> um, but... I think the biggest lesson is that we're tired. You all tired out there? Feeling it? I think that's yeah. a yes. That's that's a collective yes. I feel like yes. I collectively heard every parent who Everybody just groaned. Say, yeah. Yeah, we're tired. We're exhausted. We get it. Uh, we're right there with you. Um, but we want to share with you guys um, our just a, a, a list that we have, have uh, put together highlighting probably the top lessons that we've learned. And before we get to that... If you are new to the show, first of all, welcome to you, and thanks for tuning in to the very last episode of 2023. If you're like, man, I'm just finding you guys, Uh, I need to know more, jump over to resilientcaregiver.org slash podcast, and you can learn all about our show and catch up on past episodes, plus um, feel free to browse our free resources, um, some of our other, uh, uh, some of the other things that we have going on with the Resilient Caregiver all listed over on that website. And I also want to tell you guys, like speaking of uh, everybody being tired, um, we're tired, you're tired, and everybody feeling kind of at their wits end, right? Um, We are hosting an absolute 100% free three-part workshop coming up in the middle of January, all about overcoming uh, isolation and burnout as a caregiver. Uh, We're going to walk you through some strategies to overcome both of those big things. And we're going to tell you more about that later on. Um, we're, we're opening that up for for registration the first week of January. So coming up in just a week, we'll tell you more about that. And speaking of end of the year, we just released a brand new mini course called The Safety Planning Essentials, which is available now for only $27. And this is the mini course you need to start the brand new year off on the right foot because it's all about building and maintaining safety plans, navigating investigations, and managing crisis in your home. We literally break down each of these big topics, give you practical insights, practical strategies, plus we also provide sample safety plans, email communication templates, a crisis management checklist, action steps, and you get a certificate of completion when you get the course done. Um, Here's the thing. This course is only $27 total, and it's only available until 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time this coming Sunday, December 31st. So don't wait to get access to this brand new mini course just rolled out called The Safety Planning Essentials. Visit resilientcaregiver.org slash safety plans or click the link in the show notes and jump over and enroll in the course now. Let's look back on 2023. So me personally, um, I don't, I would not say that 2023 comes close to the dumpster fire of 2019 and 2020, because those personally, like 2019 was like the the roughest year of our life. That was a tough year for us. 
Personally, and Personally. then 2020. 2020 was. We don't need to revisit it. Yeah. Everyone knows that was a dumpster fire for all of us. So, so here's some of our fav- some of our some of our favorite things, some of our big lessons that we've learned. Should I go first? Sure. Okay. So now don't start yawning. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, we're tired, guys. So one of the big lessons that I learned in 2023 is the value of time and space. If you guys have listened to anything that we've taught on behavior response, um, and those of you that are in our coaching program, you hear us talk about time and space a lot. And we talk about that in the context of behavior response. When our children are displaying big emotions or melting down, you know, our instinct, because we're tired, right, is to demand that they do what we need them to do, or we we demand that they they act the right way, or they stop behaving the way that they're behaving. What I personally learned with a couple of my kids this year was that in those big feeling moments, um, if if I have asked them to do something or I've asked them to stop doing something, it's really important for me to allow time and space for that for that to 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 take root within them, for their brain to make the turn from what they want to do or from that neurodivergence that we often see to actually, you know, doing what we ask them to do. Um, I've learned that multiple times with two of our kids uh, in particular, um, because again, we're talking about neurodivergence and it's really, it's typically, the typical response is, you know, no, I'm not doing that. Or no, I don't care what you say. My reaction is to, to drill down. But when I step back and allow for time and space, uh, the time and space that their brain needs to shift and to turn and to understand, it's a game changer, guys. Um, it's, it's a lesson that I know. It's a, a value that I know, but I'm learning it. I've learned it big time this year. This one really resonated with me, too, because I'm learning the value of time and space for myself. Yeah. As a caregiver, I have always had the idea that I need to be on 24 hours a day, hypervigilant always, always getting it right, having the right answer, doing the right thing. Um, We're going to talk about advocacy in a minute, but, but advocating well all the time. And it's okay as an adult to have time and space. Yeah. There are often times where my initial reaction to something, not just misbehavior, but just something, that my initial reaction isn't the one that is the most healthy or helpful. I've also learned that that space can be something different for me in the same way that we allow our our children to regroup and mm-hmm. come back and, and join us again and maybe revisit. Um, if it's a situation of misbehavior, if it's a situation of, of feeling dysregulated, we allow our kids to have that time and space. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we revisit what we need. Mm-hmm. Same thing for us. Mm-hmm. There is not only nothing wrong with going to my room to read a book for a little bit or meeting up with a friend and coming back with a fresh attitude. Mm -hmm. Um, But that is a healthy thing for me to do, not just for myself, but also for the people around me that I'm interacting with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, I'm passionate, uh, just shifting gears slightly from that. I have realized this past year, especially as we've changed our name to The Resilient Caregiver, um, how deeply passionate I am, but I think us to collectively, Mm -hmm. how passionate we are about uh, helping caregivers thrive, about helping caregivers um, build resiliency. You know, one of the things that we were talking about just the other day, um, we launched Resilient Caregiver University, which is our members only uh, community, online community. And I have just, we have just absolutely loved connecting with that community every single week. It's just been fulfilling to uh, host. We host a thing every week called Office Hours where uh, the members of the university can log, can just literally um, jump into the community page and connect with us. And we answer questions. We give advice. Uh, we They connect with one another. And it's been so incredibly rewarding. And every single week, every single week that goes by, 
I realize how deep our passion is uh, for helping caregivers thrive. And if you're like, man, let me know. I want to know more about the university. Stay tuned. We're going to tell you all about that coming up very, very soon. But it really has um, just you know stirred our hearts for how much we love you guys, how much we love helping you. We're right there with you. We're caregivers just like you. We struggle the same way that you struggle. Um, and it's just been a, it's just an, a, been a great awakening this year uh, as we've changed to the resilient caregiver, how passionate we are about helping you achieve resiliency. Yeah, I, I have really enjoyed this shift in our, our focus a little because the people that we're caring for, mm-hmm. our children, for us, um, they're still at the center, but we can't do well if we don't take care of ourselves. And, yeah. and that's been something that you and I have been realizing a lot about ourselves. Yeah. And then just realizing about the community around us, that these yeah. are other caregivers, other parents just like us, and they need that encouragement, that time together. So I, I agree with you. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, advocacy does not end when your child turns 18. Oh, so true. We so are... True caregivers of adult children yes um and so 2023 has been a big year for us navigating um you know not not only our our grown-up grown-up kids who've you know got their own kids (laughs) in their own lives yeah um but also navigating college and student housing and um you know what an IEP looks like for an adult child who's not completed school yet um going out into independent living housing um yeah it just it doesn't end yeah and and the resources that we think should be there um are either not there or they are um inaccessible not easily accessible and so i think this has been a, a realization, something that we're learning and, and continuing to learn yeah. is that that advocacy doesn't end. Um, it shifts, it grows, it changes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in many ways, it goes along with the time and space. Mm-hmm. There's a lot about needing to advocate for an adult child that also involves a lot of time and space. Yeah. It, it really may be that very practical, hey, I'm going to leave your apartment right now. Yeah. Um, Boundaries. But I'm gonna, We're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna in a give too. you a, a call later, yeah. and let's see if we can revisit how to completely finish yeah. your laundry. Yeah. Let's see if we can revisit how we're going to pay this bill yeah. this afternoon when yeah. you're feeling better. Yeah, and I, you know, I'll just say too that you know the I think what what I've learned, you know, you have been on the front lines with one of our adult children in particular uh, in terms of the advocacy piece, and I have realized how incredibly hard advocacy is as well you know like just standing back and watching you know some of the ups and downs that our child has gone through um as a reminder that advocacy never ends you know it it doesn't end now that doesn't mean that your child is going to continue to live in your house with you because our adult children do not um but it's a reminder too that advocacy is hard um advocacy is worth it too it's worth it there are days where it feels like it is not and we just had one of those, you know, recently, but it is. So, um, you know, another one, another lesson uh, for both of us, um, but I'm going to speak from my perspective here is um, the lesson of focusing on the need before uh, focusing on the behavior is a game changer. You know, back to what we talked about at the very beginning, time and space. Um, I think when our children are experiencing big feeling moments, when the uh, the dysregulation is at an all time high, um, it's easy for us as caregivers in the middle of our exhaustion and our frustration and our burnout, right, to react to the behavior, mm-hmm. you know, and because we see the behavior right before us. I mean, that's all in all fairness, the the big behaviors are blowing up in our face, right? So it's really easy to focus on that. But one of the lessons that I've continually learned in those big feeling moments is to step back and remind myself that this child is expressing an unmet need or what I'm seeing before me is uh, a, a child fighting for something they believe they need. So I need to focus on that before I focus on the behavior. And I need to work to meet the need 
before I try to stop the behavior, right? Now, there is a place for correction and discipline and boundaries, right? But initially, in those big feeling moments, I need to step back and remind myself of what's really happening here, um, that the, the trauma history dictates present behaviors, and that's what I need to focus on first and foremost. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, big lesson for me this year is it is okay to set firm boundaries. Ooh, say that again for the people <laughs> in the back. It is okay. It is okay. It is not just okay. It is good and it is healthy to set firm boundaries. It's a must. Even yeah. if the person you're setting firm boundaries with has a disability. Mm -hmm. Even if the person you're setting firm boundaries with has a significant trauma experience. Even if the person that you're setting boundaries with is somebody that you love, mm -hmm. it is extremely important to set firm boundaries. Yeah. Um, I think I always knew that it was important, but this year has been a real test in realizing and understanding and accepting that it's also okay. Yeah. It's okay to say, I'm all done answering the phone for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's okay to say, you can't talk to me like that. It's okay to say, um, yes, I have money in my savings account, but you can't have it just because you want it. Mm. Um, it's there okay. Are a lot of, lo I can see a lot of heads nodding right now as you just sure. said that. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and, and this isn't just our children, right? No, this, this no, is no. us functioning in the yeah. world. Often if, if we're leaning in, if we're listening to a podcast called The Resilient Caregiver, um, we're probably the kind of people who want to take care of others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes the best thing that you can do in taking care of someone else is setting a very clear boundary. Um, I will help you find this resource, but I will not get the resource for you. Mm. I will, um, I'll show you where to go, but I'm not taking you there. Yeah. You need to take you there. Um, I can, you know, more specifically, I, I can help you write out a budget, but I can't make you follow the budget. Right, and if you right. don't and there's no money left, that's not something I can fix. It's not right. my money. That's a natural consequence. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, and I think that this one in many ways goes along side by side or hand in hand with advocacy. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of what we're doing as caregivers is finding those resources, passing on those resources. Um, but it does not mean that every person that we engage with needs to have um, unrestricted access into our life 24 hours a day. Yeah, um, We've always come from the perspective of uh, adoptive parents. We are foster and adoptive parents. So our communities in many ways can be um, larger, mm -hmm. more entangled. Yeah, you know, these yeah. aren't just acquaintances. This might be a, a child's parent yeah. or a child's sibling. Um, it's okay to say, hey, I really love you, and I'm very glad you're yeah. a part of our family. And here's what I can do, mm -hmm. and here's what I can't do right now. Right, and, right. And that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So. You know, one of the things that just, just came to mind as, as another lesson for us um, and it's something that we say uh, in our in Trauma Knowledge Masterclass when we're talking about, um, I think it's when we're talking about advocacy or we're talking mm -hmm. about uh, advocating for our children. Um, we, we say, it's okay to try something different. Actually, I think it's from our, our behavior response module, yeah. right? One of those modules. We, we, say it, we say it like this, it's okay to, to try something different, right? That's in the context of responding to your children's behaviors. But... I just want to say this, that, you know, a lesson that we've learned is change is good. It's okay to, to go different directions. If something needs to be done differently or huh. something that we need to do differently, it's okay. I mean, goodness, we changed ev our entire na the entire name, brand, imaging, right. everything for um, what used to be honestly adoption is now the resilient caregiver. Right. Um, and we did that not just because we thought, hey, that sounds like a cool name. It's ba way bigger than that. We realized we wanted to become laser focused on helping you thrive and helping you find success. And because of that, we decided it's time to go a different direction. It's time to change. And I think for you as caregivers, for us as caregivers, it's okay for us 
to, um, you know, to, to try something different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we've done a lot of traveling this year. And the thing that I have learned, um, is that it is easier to pack all your stuff in a laundry basket. (laughs) Just put it all in the laundry basket. It's going it's back true. in the laundry basket anyway. Um, yeah, that's yeah, actually your stuff's going to live there. So get a laundry basket, put all your stuff in it, take it, it where you got to go, and then bring it back. I'm telling you. So we're actually on the road right now as we're recording this, and I'm looking back behind us, and I literally this morning thought, you know what? I got a bunch of laundry in my laundry basket. Cause we each uh, just backstory. Each of us have our own little like laundry. It's like a little canvas laundry basket. Um, that when laundry comes out of the washing machine or washer and dryer, it gets folded and put into everybody's respective uh, laundry baskets. And then everybody carries that laundry basket up to their room. Today, before we were leaving, I looked in my basket. I'm like, dang, I got everything I need right here. Literally picked it up, Throwing took it to the car. Throwing a toothbrush and let's go. It's awkward though when you walk into a hotel. I'm it just gonna is, say that. it is. I was in a hotel on, on my way back. It's awkward. Uh, from our son's grandma's house actually. Yeah. Um, and that's all about that, that your community growing larger, yep, right? There you go. Yep. <laughs> so I was on my way home traveling back and I walked into a hotel at midnight and hauled in my laundry basket and the woman kind of looked down, looked back at me and handed me my key. She she's gets like, it. Yeah. She's like, I, I can't even, no, I can't she even gets touch it. that she right now. She was like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Carry yeah. on. Yeah. So, on that's, that note, too. That's my advice. That's a lesson learned. On that note, too, I will say um, memory foam pillow. Mm-hmm. Don't forget it. Because don't forget it. You forgot yours on this trip, but I did remember mine. But typically, we have those things. They are like, they are attached to us, right? Yeah. So when you get to be our age, memory foam pillows. It's a Write good thing. yourself a little note. Yeah. Don't forget take it. Take it with you. Yeah. And then the last one that we have, out of so many lessons... Yeah, the people you're with right now are the people you're supposed to be with. Make the most of it. Yeah. This has been a year of learning for us that lesson. Um, Sometimes you're going to have all nine of your children all in one space together, and it's going to be joy-filled. Sometimes you're going to be at your extended family Christmas, and all the cousins are going to be there, and all the aunts and uncles are going to be there, and and that's going to be amazing. Sometimes you're going to be in a hospital room with your grandson, mm. and that's the way you spend the day. Yeah, um, and that's where you're supposed to be right now. Sometimes you're going to be traveling back and forth a ten hour drive because your son lost his grandpa, and that's his biological tie to the world. And you are going to be in the car for 10 hours listening to audiobooks one way and in the car for 10 hours listening to podcasts the other way and hours at the funeral home and hours yeah planning and preparing yeah. and and doing the things that you need to do and that's where you're meant to be yeah sometimes yeah. a neighbor's going to show up and you're going to stand and talk for an hour mm mm-hmm. mhm be with the people that you're with right now. That's yeah. where you're supposed to be. Make the most of it. Yeah. Guys, listen, um, we don't know what kind of year you've had. I mean, we've talked to a lot of you. Um, it's it's been a it's been a year enough of ups and downs for us. It's been a good year. There's been parts of it that have been really dark, really discouraging. Um, but I have to say this, you know, we we look back on this year and we've grown. We've grown as caregivers, we've grown as human beings. Um, as, as we, we work to help you become the best caregiver possible, we are working personally to also become the best caregivers possible. And we're excited about 2024. You know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, uh, we're starting off 2024 with a bang because we know how much help you need. We know how hard this journey is. And so right out of the gate in the very first month of 2024, we're hosting a brand new workshop all about overcoming isolation and burnout. And we're so excited for that. You're going to find out more about that, especially if you're on our email list. And if you're not on our email list, jump over to resilientcaregiver.org and uh, sign up for one of our free resources. That'll get you on our email list. Um, anywhere on our website, you're going to find um, access points to get our freebie, our free resources. Sign up. We can't wait to start this new year. Um, and we hope that you guys have had a peaceful holiday season 
Um, and we're wishing you the best. And we will see you in the brand new year, 2024. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the Resilient Caregiver podcast, courtesy of the Resilient Caregiver. Learn more by visiting www.resilientcaregiver.org.